Is there a rad tech shortage in 2024? Yes, 100%. So let's talk about it and what that might mean for you if you are someone looking into a career of radiology. Okay, so as an x-ray tech, we are the eyes of the doctor, and there is an increasing demand for medical imaging. So the demand for radiologic services is increasing due to an aging population as well as increasing chronic conditions that all just require medical imaging services. And we're also seeing higher life expectancies now. And because of these higher life expectancies due to advancements in medicine over the years, we are seeing an increasing instances of chronic conditions and other diseases such as hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, etc. that all just require more care. So a lot of these conditions require treatment planning and follow-ups and just the number or volume of these imaging procedures are just outpacing the number of professionals available to do them. And we also have an aging workforce that is nearing retirement now. So many x-ray techs as well as radiologists are nearing retirement age and there's just not enough new grads to kind of fill those positions. And this isn't just a radiology issue. I mean, this is all across the board when it comes to healthcare professions. There are shortages for doctors, nurses, physicians, respiratory therapists, you name it, the list goes on. There are many healthcare professions and fields being impacted right now due to these shortages that are a lot of the same factors that we're talking about in this video. And not only is this aging generation needing more medical care, like we talked about, but they are also a big portion of our healthcare professionals that are nearing retirement. So there is just it's kind of a double whammy and we are not being able to fill that demand fast enough with new grads. There's just not enough replacements. And that it kind of segues me into my next topic, which talks about the educational pathways. So of course, becoming a doctor, it is a very rigorous and long path of medical school and fellowships and that sort. Being a nurse, you are getting a four year bachelor's degree and which is very rigorous as well. As an x-ray tech, it is a two year degree. So you might be thinking, oh, only two years. I mean, anyone can do that. It's well, why is there such a shortage if just two years to get this degree and you're already working in the field? Yeah, that's what it sounds like, but it is also a very competitive program and these programs are very small and limited capacity. So we are only, these programs are pumping out 20 to 30 x-ray techs a year. And becoming an x-ray tech requires specialized training, commitment in the didactic and clinical settings, as well as finally passing a certification board after graduation. And although it is a two-year degree, it is a full-time commitment as in you are working through your summers as well. It's not just you do your fall and spring semester and take summer off. No, it is two years full time. You'll be in clinical as well as didactic, the classroom, working your butt off. And it is, again, a rigorous program. It is full time, two years, applying yourself to actually graduate and pass the boards to become a registered radiologic technologist. And while you're in the clinical setting, it's all unpaid. And they're usually eight hour days and the closer you get to graduation, it's will start like maybe three days a week clinical, then four days a week, then close to five days a week clinical. So it is demanding and there's not a whole lot of time to work on top of the program. And that can deter people away from even applying to be an x-ray tech as well, especially in this type of economy. And also these programs are extremely competitive. Again, if a program is only taking 10 to 20 students a year, yeah, it's not gonna be easy to just waltz in and start that x-ray program. For this reason, many programs have wait lists and there are many students that are currently on these wait lists. And when, just to put in perspective, if you've ever taken an undergraduate course at a university and have gone into a lecture hall, say humanities or intro to business or whatever the case, and there are a hundred students next to, you, next to you, it's kind of like eye-opening. You're like, wow, I came from high school, it was 20 to one. Now it's 120 to one. Kind of crazy. Um, a business degree is just is so common. And these university universities are pumping out thousands of business degrees every year. X-ray programs are pumping out 10 to 20 students a year. Yeah, there might be a few different programs in your area, but that still does not compare at all. So you can see why a business degree compared to X-ray degree being something being so specialized, there is just there's so many more opportunities to get a job right now. And there's that just contributes to the shortage is that there's just not enough new grads coming out to fill the demand for a lot of the reasons that we've talked about earlier in this video. So because of this competitiveness to get into an x-ray program, it can also deter people away from even applying or they might apply once, not get into it. And they're like, I don't want to wait another year. 
And um, I will make more videos on how to give yourself the best shot of getting into an x-ray program your first year, because again, I am someone that is all about trying to create your own luck. And I think that if you can get into an x-ray program sooner than later, you will be so much better off in the long run. Um, you don't want to be a student that's been on the wait list for three to four years because you're just kind of letting life pass by. Sometimes that's just how it is. That's how it works, especially if it's a program in your area. But um, I want to help you guys as much as possible to be able to get accepted into a program and knock out that program in two years and be on your way to working as a registered rad tech. So now we just talked about some of the educational requirements and how that contributes to this ongoing rad tech shortage that we're having right now. But let's move on to another major contributing factor, and that is there's a high burnout rate for many medical professions, not just x-ray techs. So as x-ray tech, we often work in high stress environments, usually with long shifts, particularly in hospitals and emergency settings. And the physical and mental demands of the job combined with the increased workloads have contributed to high burnout rates, leading professionals to leave earlier in the field than actually expected. A major contributing factor to this is, of course, COVID. COVID truly expedited this burnout for a lot of radiology professionals and a lot of professionals either left the field altogether or if they're near retirement age, they retired early. I'm not going to lie to you, working during COVID times, 2020, 2021, 2022, still seeing residual effects of COVID uh, wasn't great. It definitely expedited my feeling of burnout and I was looking at other pathways too because we just, I don't think hospitals did a great job of really preparing for it, which it's understandable. No one thought this was ever even coming, but um, it was just not only a physically hard time of the job, constantly gowning up PPE, whatnot, but mentally and emotionally. I mean, we were seeing patients die at rates that was just unbelievable. I remember doing many x-rays every morning, morning portables, and you would talk to them and then they would just deteriorate. And a couple of days later, they were on a vent when you were just talking to them before. COVID was just a scary thing. I'm going to ramble way too much on this. I will make another video that goes into my experience when it comes to COVID. But again, the physical demands, along with the emotional toll it took on you, it, it took on any medical professional um, during COVID. Nurses, doctors, I mean, it was it was hard. It was really hard. No one is meant to see that amount of death. No, no one's ready for that. I mean, we know getting into a medical field, you're here to help patients and you are going to see death. That's just apparent when it comes to medicine. But at that rate, it was just alarming. And you're just like, you come home from work exhausted and be like, what just happened? Um, so yes, a lot of people have many different experiences with COVID, but COVID is a, again, a major reason of why we saw such higher burnout rates and why we saw a lot of medical professionals leave the profession altogether. It is getting better. It's a lot. It's getting much better. I don't want to um, scare you guys away. We are still seeing residual effects of COVID, but um, we're finally getting back on our feet. Hospitals are getting the staff back. Better protocols are in place. More PPE is in place. So we are uh, making greater strides to hopefully that sort of thing will never happen again, but we will be prepared much better if it ever does. All right. So let's wrap this up before I keep rambling. Um, so we talked about a lot of contributing factors of why we are seeing rad tech shortages in 2024. And it was not always like this. Um, I went to school in 2015. I was able to get a job right out of school. But I remember a lot of the older techs saying, even 10 years before that, that there was there was no shortage in x-ray techs and it was hard to get a job. And once you got a job, say, the only position available was a night shift position at a hospital. You worked in that night shift for three, four years before a day shift became available, which is unheard of nowadays because now you can graduate and pretty much walk into whatever shift you want or have available. And there might even be a sign on bonus with it. So just like the stock market and other markets, things can change, things can fluctuate. But right now in 2024, going into 2025, um, it is there is definitely a shortage of x-ray techs. There is a major market for travel radiology just because of how many shortages there are all around the nation. And if you are someone looking to get into x-ray, it is a great time because I'm sure by the time you get in and graduate, you will be able to walk into a job. You will have many job offers and many opportunities. I don't see this changing anytime soon. We have a lot, there's a lot of work to do to really get the field back to where it was, but this should be a sign for you that, hey, this is job security. This is job stability. 
I know when I graduate this degree, I will be able to get a job somewhere, wherever that might be. And that's hard to say for a lot of other degrees right now. To go back to business, just because we were talking about it, you can get a business degree and then out of school, now you're fighting, trying to find a job with the other thousand business degrees that just graduated. And um, you might not be able to find a job for six months or so. But with X-Ray, once you graduate, you, you will be able to go on Indeed and just see tons of jobs around you, as well as many different types of jobs, surgery centers, hospital settings, ortho clinics, urgent cares, freestanding ERs, you name it. There are healthcare needs all over the place. So again, um, great time to do it. I'm going to keep rambling because I'm very ADD and I just get off on tangents. This is why it's so hard for me making YouTube videos and why it takes so long, but I hope I didn't bore you to death. Please uh, leave any comments or questions you have down below. I will do my best to get back to you and help answer those questions as best I can. So with that said, you guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.